Tanmay Desai, fund manager at SPI Mutual Fund, who tracks the auto space very closely, joins in on the show right now. Tanmay, hi, morning. Good to have you on the show. You know, till about two years back, autos seemed like a very passenger vehicle restricted story. Now that rally has moved on to CVs, it's moved more than not to uh, two wheelers as well. The entire index and its components, pretty much all the players are sitting at all time highs. Two years hence, given that, you know, there's so much disruption still to take place, so many new listed entities, Hyundai, Ola, still to join in on the bandwagon. How is it that you see the auto industry shaping up for the next two years? Yeah, no, thank you so much uh, for uh, this question. Uh, I think like you rightly uh, kind of mentioned, uh, the next two years definitely do look promising with a number of uh, potential listings that are coming up. Uh, but it's important to understand the cyclical nature also of the sector. And at any given point in time, not all uh, vehicle segments uh, truly behave in the same uh, manner. While in the last few years, uh, there has been a catch up uh, post the hyperinflation phase that we saw across vehicle categories also the impact on account of covid uh, that had a bearing on the on, on the sector uh, but as we speak of course yes uh, most of these segments have done pretty well uh, but even at uh, this point in time we do see uh, good pockets of growth uh, within both the uh, original equipment manufacturer space as well as on the uh, auto component side uh, in particular uh, when we do look at the uh, quotient of uh, underpenetration as well as the quotient of uh, affordability which has been improving over the years, uh, definitely uh, it seems that there is a lot more promise still in certain fragments within the automobile space. Uh, Tanmay, uh, I want to understand, <clears throat> you just raised a new fund as well, purely dedicated to uh, you know the auto space. Uh, and auto and auto ancillary is the broad basket, but what are the areas around that? Because I'm sure you must be having a universe of almost a few dozen companies to look at. So are you looking at smaller players as well or auto financiers or other tyre companies or not run-of-the-mill auto ancillary? What is, how are you broadening your universe? Right. Uh, so, you know, when we do look at the auto and the auto component space, uh, firstly, we do have a universe which is comprising of around 100. 134 odd companies. That's how uh, we have visualized it at this point in time. And of course, there are new listings that can possibly hit the market uh, this year as well as next uh, and also in the future. Uh, like you rightly rightly again asked, uh, there are four broad buckets in which we are trying to categorize uh, our investments. One, of course, are the original equipment manufacturers, uh, which are a dozen or slightly more than that. But very interestingly, there are a number of auto component companies, uh, be it in the tire space, be it in batteries, or in a host of other technology areas uh, where we can definitely uh, evaluate uh, options. Here we would like to look at companies uh, that are able to adapt to the uh, changing landscape uh, with respect to whether it is EVs or in general we call it alternate fuel, as well as companies that are willing to uh, put the capex and has uh, good and strong customer relationships. That's the second broader bucket where we will have almost close to 100 odd companies or even more than that within the auto components uh, space, uh, predominant uh, uh, a part of uh, the auto component companies uh, are in the small and the mid cap category. Uh, the third bucket, of course, is uh, alternate fuel or uh, EV, if we may put it. For sure, today, there are very few companies that are uh, present in the EV domain. Uh, but again, uh, uh, not only are the OEMs investing uh, for uh, an EV-led future, but also the auto component guys are preparing uh, for uh, electrification, both from a India domain perspective, as well as the exports perspective. So that's an interesting area, but of course, few opportunities present today and lastly I think is on exports uh, which over the period of time uh, uh, while has uh, shown a lot of promise but hasn't particularly done well in the last couple of years but uh, we clearly see uh, green shoots out there and uh, uh, while again the opportunity set might be quite limited as far as the OEMs is concerned within exports but the auto component guys are uh, throwing a number of interesting opportunities as far as uh, exports is concerned so yeah these are the four broad buckets in which we are currently looking at the space, which is OEMs, uh, the auto ancillaries, uh, EVs, uh, as well as on the export side. You are also, are you also looking at logistics uh, to auto companies and logistic providers around that? 
Yeah, no, actually, uh, you also did ask about uh, auto financers. Uh, so this is a pure uh, uh, thematic fund where we are looking only at uh, auto and auto ancillary companies, uh, where, as I just mentioned, uh, there are uh, quite a few number of opportunities for us to evaluate and invest. Uh, at the same time, we can look at stocks uh, from a global perspective, which is we can look to invest uh, outside India, where the fund does permit us to invest almost up to 35% of the fund into international names but uh, the straight answer to what you are asking uh, we are not looking at uh, auto financers or the logistics companies uh, but yes at the same point in time the fund does permit us uh, up to 20 percent to evaluate some of these names uh, which uh, can be a, a corollary to the auto opportunity in general in the next two years who do you think is going to win the race and i'm i'm going to just keep the cv segment outside of this but you think the ones with a larger, more dominant EV exposure is what the market is going to like? Or is it going to be continue to be, uh, you know, ICE engine? Right. I think uh, it, this question needs to be dealt with uh, both uh, from what you are asking, which is the near term, the next two years, as well as on the long term. Uh, the uh, easier answer is, of course, on the longer term, where one needs to evaluate companies uh, which are preparing for the right future. Now, that can be alternate fuel in terms of EVs. It can be in terms of CNG. It can be in terms of hydrogen. The important thing is how prepared the companies are, both on the OEM side as well as on the auto component side. And we are interestingly also seeing the incumbents not uh, uh, you know uh, uh, be behind uh, in in this particular domain they are also uh, launching uh, the ev products as well as looking at alternate fuel because they also need to maintain the cafe norms and the other regulations uh, that keep uh, coming in uh, so uh, it's important to identify those names which are investing for the future uh, in particular to your question with respect to the next two years, uh, while EV penetration has been increasing, it's still uh, almost only around 2% as far as passenger car industry is concerned and about 5% in the uh, in the two-wheeler space. And uh, there has been some boost as far as uh, uh, the government, uh, you know, subsidies or schemes is concerned uh, out here. I think over the next two years, uh, it will be a wait and watch uh, situation while a number of these companies Companies are interestingly uh, launching a number of EV products. Uh, the uh, cost of parity as well as acceptability of these products will actually determine whether one truly has to depend upon any form of subsidy or there is a broader acceptance both across two wheelers and passenger cars. But within the two, if one has to uh, you know put the bet on within electrification, I think two wheeler electrification will surely happen at a much faster pace uh, versus what it may happen in the passenger car industry. Yeah, I want to just come back on that uh, CV part, you know, we had mm -hmm. uh, one of the managements from CV companies recently tell us that they are preparing for a sharp improvement in the CV cycle in the second half of this year. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there are uh, some companies, uh, the CV company which got bought over by uh, Japanese uh, you know, conglomerates and trying to make this a, like a CV hub for the, the region. Uh, then there is a, another CV play which is housed under a passenger vehicle company. How would you you know, uh, aim at playing the CV part. Right. Uh, you know, you're, you're right. Uh, there is definitely a, a dichotomy today in terms of uh, where we are uh, within the CV cycle is concerned. There is a fragment of the industry uh, which believes uh, that uh, the slowdown may continue for a while. And there is also a fragment uh, which is looking at uh, kind of uh, growth, kind of going back to normalcy uh, sooner than later. Right. If one has to truly look at the kind of infrastructure push within the country, if more roads are going to be laid, if more transportation of goods has to happen and if more factories are going to come, I think it's uh, definitely a case where growth may be slow for a while, but growth has to come back even in the commercial vehicle industry. Uh, also, at the same point in time, when we look at the number of vehicles that are kind of being sold today versus the previous peak, almost uh, uh, it is comparable, though the tonnage is a little higher than the previous peak. Uh, and every subsequent peak that we have seen is materially higher than the preceding peak as far as tonnage growth is concerned. So there definitely is a, a good argument to make as far as uh, growth uh, kind of happening 
in the uh, commercial vehicle industry, uh, if not in, in the immediate uh, few quarters, but definitely in, in, the, in the near term or in the future. And in, in that context, CV is also not something uh, to kind of completely dismiss. I think you also raised a very valid point with respect to how entities are housed within uh, and uh, 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 them wanting to uh, look for a possible demerger, etc. Uh, but more importantly, even within CVs, there is a significant opportunity that lies on the auto component side. Because again, simplistically speaking, the vehicle that is being sold in India from a regulation standpoint is very much comparable to that which is sold even in the US as well as in the Europe. And to that extent, there are a number of components that can be looked at not only from an India perspective, but also from a global perspective, allowing companies to invest in a larger capacity and get economies of scale. Uh, so while uh, CV will have an opportunity as far as the India-centric uh, India centric opportunity is concerned, but at the same point in time, CV is also extremely or equally interesting when it comes to the component space because there are a number of uh, companies and components that we do export and command a reasonable market share across markets. All right. Thank you so much for joining in and giving us your overall view on how things are shaping up for the auto sector and where the new areas of promise lie. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.